Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's see an example of this very handy fundamental theorem of gradients. So we remember that when we take the integral of the gradient of a function dot dl, we should get the same as when we evaluate the function at the end point minus when we evaluate the function at the initial point, regardless of the path taken from a to b. So what we're going to do here is travel from the origin to this point right here on the x-axis and then up here where we have the point 2 for x and 1 for y. You can see that if we evaluate the end point b, we get 2, and we evaluate the initial point a, we get 0, subtracted 2, we get 2. Which means that if we then go ahead and work it out, on the left side, we take the gradient first, then we dot it with the L, and then we take the integral and evaluate it, we should get the same result. Of course, we need to do it twice, because we have the path broken into the path 1a and path 1b. All right, so the gradient of the function, the function is defined over here. So here's the definition of the gradient. We take then the integral from 0 to 2. This is for the x value. The partial derivative of the function with respect to x, that would be y squared. Um, and of course, that would be times the x unit vector. The partial derivative of the function with respect to y, that would be plus 2xy with the y unit vector, and the partial derivative of the function with respect to z, that would be plus 0 in the z direction, and then we're going to multiply that times dl. Now remember that dl can be defined as this. dl is defined as dx in the x direction, plus dy in the y direction, plus dz in the z direction. And of course, in this case, dy and dz both are going to be zero because z and y does not change going from here to here. Only this portion is valid, so we're going to dot this with dx in the x direction like this. And when we do the dot product, there's only one component over here, then only the x component survives. So this is equal to the integral from zero to two of y squared times dx. Now, of course, y squared, hmm, what is y? Well, in this case, y is going to be 0 for the entire length from here to here. So we know that this is equal to the integral of 0 dx. Oop, dx right there. So this is simply equal to 0. So long path 1a, that integral equals 0. All right, now let's do what path 1b. So in this case, we are, again, are going to take the uh, integral now this is going to be from y equals 0 to y equals 1. And we're going to have the same gradient, so this will be y squared in the x direction, plus 2xy in the y direction, plus 0 in the z direction. And we're going to take the dot product with dl, but the only component there that survives is the middle component. Only y is changing, x and z are not changing, so this will be dy in the y direction. So you can see when we take dot product, only the y component will survive. So this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of 2xy times dy. Now in this case, notice that x will be constant and x will be equal to 2 and the path 1b. So therefore we have 2 times 2, which is 4. We can take that outside integral sign. 4 times the integral of y dy from 0 to 1. So this is going to be 4 times y squared over 2 from 0 to 1. So this would be when we plug in the upper limit, we get 1 half. Plug in the lower limit, we get 0. 1 half times 4 is equal to 2. And notice, when we add the result of our first path 1a, add up to the result of path 1b together, we get 2, which is the same as the value that we found when we took the difference of the function evaluated at the two endpoints from a to b. So here you can see that Yes, it appears that the fundamental theorem of the gradient does work, but we haven't shown yet that it's path independent, which means that if we actually travel along this path right here, now let's take path 2 along this point, I'll put a little circle around that, then we should get the same result. Well, since I'm running out of board space, let's do one more video where we take that second path, and again we should get the same result, which will both then show that it does appear that the fundamental theorem of gradients does work. And secondly, we can also show that it's path independent. So let's stay tuned and let's take a look and see what it looks like when we take path two.